Hey y'all and welcome to today's video. So today I'm sharing my March wrap up. So these are all of the books that I read in the month of March. So I've got six books to share with you and I'm just gonna give you my thoughts and opinions and we'll go from there. So the first two books that I read were actually from NetGalley. Now for those who are not aware, NetGalley is a website where you can actually get access to um, books that have not been um, published, that haven't, hit the market yet so they're I guess they're most of them are pub well I don't know anywho that's where you can go to get those to get access to those and so I've got two books from um, NetGalley this month so the first one was The Secrets Next Door by Sally Royer Durr now this book um, is a domestic thriller and I actually gave it three stars um, so this one is about a woman and her twin sister who pretty much live next door together and they own a big shop together. And one of the sisters, she's married a very wealthy, um, I guess he's a banker or businessman or something like that. And the other one, her husband, he's like a bank or branch manager. So not, doesn't make as much money, but they're, they're, they're living. And the one that the sister, the, the bank manager, he actually grew up with the twins. And so this one is all about a new neighbor that moves in next door um, and she's got secrets and the twins are trying to figure out what's going on and what's happening and so she's pretty much just um, kind of really secretive um, and they're just trying to figure out what's going on with her. So I gave this book three stars. So here is the review that I posted on NetGalley. All right, it says, this book was fine. I found the writing style to be a bit abrupt. We got just the facts and nothing more. The pacing seemed a bit off as well. It was quite consistent despite this being a thriller novel. I would have expected increased pacing during those scenes where it was where it was warranted to help with the suspense or thrill. Lastly, I wasn't a big fan of the paranormal aspect that was thrown in at the end. It seemed a bit out of left field. Maybe had this been introduced and exhibited sooner, it would have made more sense. To put it at the end just felt like a bit of a cop out. So yeah, there was this aspect in how they kind of explained it. And I, I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler, but like how they kind of pulled it together and how she found out. It just felt really convenient. Like, yeah, I just, I didn't like how that happened. Um, and when I talk about it being abrupt, um, I was thinking about it earlier because I was having the same feeling with another book that I read this month. And I was realizing that it's more so like, there are moments where I guess it, it gets really conversational or it kind of, it almost seems like when a friend is conveying a story to you and so that friend doesn't stop and go, the trees were swaying in the breeze and the tables were green with, you know, it, there's like some the sort of descriptive narrative that sort of usually generally interjects within a story. I'm not saying it wasn't there, but it just, I don't know, there was something, about it that just seemed like here are the facts of the story let's go and so that was another thing that kind of was weird and interesting but anyway cool that was the first story and i will actually go ahead and pop up i probably already did that i popped up the cover um i think that one's already been published um so since i read it so the next book that I read was Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice. So this is the fourth book in the Finley Donovan series. And um, so for this one, I actually gave it five stars in my neck galley, but I think I would switch it up and give it maybe like three and a half. Um, as I was reading this month, and I probably talked about it a bit more in the previous video where I was talking about Sarah Janess, um, I'm thinking I, I'm, I'm like learning to kind of tweak my, the way that I rate stories. And instead of thinking about them, how would I rate them within their genre? More so, how would I rate them overall in terms of my whole literary worldview? So, if that makes sense. So, if I were to rate this for like cozy mysteries, I would probably give it five stars. But if I'm like reading it in terms of my whole physical library, it'd probably be like a four, 3.54. You know what I mean? So, that being said, um, this one in NetGalley, so NetGalley mostly gives um, e-books, 
but they did for this um, Finley Donovan. It was actually an audiobook that you were kind of reading. And so here is my feedback on this story. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Finley Donovan is a lighthearted mystery filled with mishaps and misbehavior. The audiobook narration was on point. She was very engaging and enjoyable to listen to. Overall, the story was easy to follow, especially coming from someone who has not read any of the previous books in the series. The story hinges on details from previous books. However, there was enough backstory thoughtfully weaved into the narration to make the storyline easy to follow without having read the previous books. Furthermore, the backstory wasn't so cumbersome as to detract from the flow of this novel. I would highly recommend for someone who is looking for a lighthearted mystery novel that doesn't take itself too seriously. And wholeheartedly agree. I think for this one, I would definitely um, uh, go back and read the first three novels um, just so that I can kind of get more up to speed on all of the characters. Um, because I'm sure there's a lot more backstory that kind of interconnects the characters together that would definitely help me understand it even more. Um, but other overall, I really enjoyed the story and um, will definitely... Uh, prob I'll most likely grab the physical book, especially once I read the first th three books when I grab those. Um, so this one, Finley Donovan's Her Babysitter, I believe. Her boyfriend is like kidnapped and now they're on the hunt to go and get him. And I th he was kidnapped because of like loan sharks or something like that. So they're going to Atlantic City to try to find him and figure things out. And then along the way, lots of mayhap, 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 mishap happens. And so there's dead bodies and all this other stuff. So it was really interesting and entertaining how that happened. And of course, with Finley Donovan, it's one of those things, those things where she's obviously an amateur because she's a writer. She's not an actual detective. So there's like a lot of amateur, that amateurish kind of comedic humor part aspect to it like you're clearly messing up the crime scene and that kind of stuff so yeah very interesting really enjoyed it totally would recommend it if you're looking for something that's lighthearted and doesn't take itself too seriously okay so the next two books that I read I'm just going to talk about them together one of them we've already well both of them we've probably can kind of guess it was Sarah J Mass. And this one was, is book number four, A Court of Frost and Starlight. And again, this is like a tiny, teeny tiny baby. It's only like 220 pages. And then there is A Court of Silver Flames, which is a chonker. And this one was 750 pages. So let's go ahead and talk about this one. I'm gonna keep it brief since I've already talked about it. This is very much so a bridge novel, I would say. It pretty much is here to bridge us between a Court of Wings and Ruin and this chunker, A Court of Silver Flames. Unlike the other novels, this one is pretty much, we're going through everyone's different POV. So we're running, we're, um, we see Feyre, we see uh, Ness, do we see Ness in this? I don't think so. We see Cassian, we see um, Rhysand, we see more. And this is just what they're kind of prepping. They're going through winter solstice, I believe, and that winter solstice celebration, what have you. And um, yeah, it, it, it sort of drops little nuggets to kind of help get us to a, a court and rings and ruin. There isn't a plot to this. So it's pretty much just like literary fiction kind of, and most so as a setup to get us to, to this. So, um, I think it's probably necessary because it, again, it does bridge them, the two together, but don't expect whirlwinds. So that takes us to A Court of Wings, excuse me, A Court of Silver Flames. So this one is all of Cassian and Nesta's story and it takes place in their POV. And as I was reading this one, and I don't think I mentioned this, maybe I did in the previous video, but this one kind of really helped me to better understand Sarah J Mass and who she is as an author and kind of how she sets up her stories and why she sets up her stories the way that she does. And I think you saw that a little bit towards the end of um, the 
Throne of Glass series, but you're really kind of seeing that, especially within her novels, and it's helped me to appreciate her as an author a bit more. Now, I I don't do smut, and, and she does have like explicit scenes, and so I did have to do quite a bit of skimming past that stuff. Um, cause I do, I, again, I prefer a closed door romance. I, I don't need explicit sex scenes. Um, but other than that, um, she truly is like that embodiment of romanticy. Um, in that a lot of the beginning parts of the novel, like literally the first half of it, it's more so that character driven, narration as we're kind of getting into Nesta's head and, and what she's going through given the events that she witnessed at the end of a court of, in Wings and Ruin of Wings and Ruin and we see a little snippet of her kind of attitude and 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 we're seeing that manifest a little bit more in this one and so um we're really kind of getting into her head of, of like what's going on with her and that's really the chunk of the first part is that front part is very character driven. And then um, you also see her doing the slow burn of the romance aspect. So we're really seeing that kind of develop in that beginning part. Um, we obviously we knew it was there based on what we saw in A Court of Wings and Ruin and the end of that. And so we're really kind of seeing that slow burn development of that romance in the beginning parts of the book. And so then the plot, we see drips of that in the beginning, but it really kind of picks up towards the very end. And that's kind of been her style. And I think that really talks, speaks to how she writes. So she's trying to balance the romance with the fantasy plot. And so a lot of that front part is really the development of the romance. And then we, and then we kind of move into the actual plot of the fantasy that helps to move the fantasy forward. So um, I'm learning to appreciate her a bit more, um, which is kind of going to probably help me get through April's TBR because I do have two more novels that I need to read in the Throne of Glass series. And so maybe now that I'm appreciating her a bit more and how she writes and understanding how she writes, I can kind of get with that a little bit. Um, I am not a big romance reader, so I think that's part of the reason why I have struggled with her in the past because again, you have that set up for romance. And I'm like, when are we getting to the plot? And so the plot really doesn't, well, it, 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 it's, it, it's smattered in there. And so you're there, I always felt like there were moments where nothing was happening. And then I was like, what are we doing? But really in those moments where nothing's happening, that's where she's kind of developing the romance and the slow burn and that kind of thing for her characters. And so if you're a romance reader, I think that's something that you would appreciate having. So that brings me to the last two books that I read. Now these two, um, they're gonna get their own separate video because it gets curiouser and curiouser. Um, when I tell you these are very similar, it is uncannily similar. I'm actually taking notes. These pink, I don't know if you can tell, but they're these tabs of things that are eerily similar between these two books. And I will be giving them their own separate video because some things, I don't know, I can't remember how the phrasing goes. Something's wrong in the house of Windsor. I don't know, something suspicious is happening here. So anywho, let's talk first about Frida McFadden. So I initially dived into Frida McFadden when I did, when I read Never Lie Back, I think in November or December and really enjoyed it. Um, but as I read more of her, I'm realizing that she suffers from the same kind of flaw as the secrets next door in that she has a very abrupt writing style and it took me kind of reading this and then reading this one to realize what it was. And even then I was still kind of struggling with trying to put a name to it. And again, it's because there is this sort of casualness of her writing style that's also a bit abrupt. So we only kind of get really what's needed. And then it's that conversational style of the narrator that, that also kind of lends itself to that. So again, it sounds more like a friend that's telling you something that's happened. And so when that friend's communicating, they're only telling you, yeah, I went up the stairs, but they're not doing the full descriptive, the stairs were blue with 
banisters of filigree. You're not getting a lot, as much of, of that from from her narration. Um, and when I read the book, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I liked it. This is, by the way, this is the Barnes & Noble Special Edition hardcover. I got this one because I was hoping that the other book parts, the other books within the series would also be, they would be released as special edition hardcovers because I am more of a hardcover girly. I have yet to see that. Um, the third book in the series comes out maybe in another month or two. And so we'll see what, what happens with that. I might end up just switching this out to a paperback, but anywho. So this one follows a housemaid and she has a sordid past. She's just been released from prison um, and she's really on the hunt for to find a job. She actually currently, at the beginning of the novel, she's actually living in her car and she's just trying to figure it out. She just got fired from a waitressing gig um, for something else. And um, she's just like, I will take anything. And so she happens to get this nannying uh, uh, a ha housemaid gig and she quickly realizes that something is weird, something's wrong, something's not right. And so the, the woman of the house, she's being, she's essentially neurotic, crazy. And she's starting to hear whispers from some of the other moms at the daughter school that, you know, something's wrong with her. And she's, as she's learning more and more about it, she's really kind of curious and weird about what's, what's going on in the house. And by the end of the story at the plot twist, we're seeing, okay, interesting, that's what happened. Um, when I was first reading it, I was really enjoying it, but when I went back and was, and I've been working on doing the research for the comparison of the two, there were a lot of questions that kind of have cropped up a little bit. And um, yeah, like certain things like the consistency of the male character and his, what he's got going on. Um, I've got questions about that and how it's anyway. So some things are, are like cropping up there, like mm, interesting. And, and sort of that consistency, you kind of start seeing the holes of it. But when you're reading it, um, especially if you read like I do and you kind of have that suspend belief kind of philosophy, then that was really kind of, I enjoyed it. So cool. And then the next one is The Last Mrs. Parrish. So this one was actually published in 2000, 2020. No, 2018, I believe, 2017, 2018. And this one was actually given to me by a friend for Christmas, like two Christmases ago. And I was just getting around to reading it. Um, and I actually really enjoyed this book. Um, she does not do, she's, she has more of a traditional writing style with descriptive phrasing. And so it's not so abrupt in her writing. And so I really appreciated that about reading this. Um, I felt like she had a bit more of, uh, fewer plot holes in hers. Um, not, that's not to say that the housemaid had major plot holes, but like this one had fewer noticeable ones that I can recall. Um, another thing about this one, um, there is actually currently on NetGalley this book two. So there is a second book coming out. Um, I think later on this year that I actually got my hands on. So I'll be reading that. I'll be finishing that in April. Um, I'm not, spoiler alert on that one. I'm not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed this one. But anywho, this one follows a home, like a, a girl who comes into town and she is hell bent on um, marrying wealthy. And, and she will do whatever she can to, to snatch up a rich, guy who can help turn her life around even if it means snatching him from another woman and so we're watching her as she's plotting it through and trying to devise her way and worm her way into this family and take over and so that is what this is about um and then lo and behold again the plot twist and the sprinkle sprinkles of 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 how that story is woven together very similar to here. So uh, I, although the um, the characters are different in their representation, so that we're talking about a maid versus a, the the hometown girl who's uh, um, what is she? She's a she's a she works at a real estate office. So as, although those are different, the general sort of 
not even a, like the connections and the, and the scandal of it all is they're, they're pretty much the same. So, um, did prefer the last Mrs. Parish better. So look out for the comparison video on this one. It will be very telling and very interesting. It will have spoilers too. So just FYI, but cool. So that is it for today's video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any video requests, by all means, go on ahead and let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.